and welcome back to Silver Flyer here in People's Republic of China. As promised, my next topic was going to be leaving China with your silver and gold. As a foreigner, uh, most of the rules I've found um, and pertain to either citizens or residents of China, although there are provisions for tourists as well. I have a friend who's helping me out and we're going to get more specific information than what I have right at the moment. But he has a five-year master's degree here in China, speaks fluently, reads, writes, and everything else. So he's the right kind of person to involve in this in dealing with directly with Chinese customs and the People's Bank of China, which also controls the inflow and outflow of gold or silver, any precious metal here in China. So what I've been able to find out so far um, is it starts with at the purchase and probably the most important thing are the certificates that come with it. Now, standard certificates, some are issued um, by the sellers or the uh, dealer company, and some are actually, uh, some are actually, as this one shows, um, directly from the People's Bank of China. And, oh, sorry, you can see that right here. People's Bank of China. So this certificate, basically, along with the metal itself, each one having its own specific certificate, allows you to apply for a permit to leave with over your limit uh, or an extended limit of precious metals. The under the limit, uh, or what I've been able to find out so far, and I'm waiting to confirm this, I've, I've found it on the internet and um, I want to hear it directly from Customs or the People's Bank of China, what exactly um, I can take out without declaring it, without having any paperwork. And I believe it's around 50 grams. Now, it's kind of confusing. They say 50 grams or two ounces. And we all know an ounce is 31.1 grams. So two ounces would be over the limit, 62.2 grams. So I'm looking to clarify that exactly. Uh, there may be also restrictions how much silver or gold, or is it silver and gold that fit within that 50 gram restriction? Probably the more constrictive of the two, knowing how Chinese bureaucracy works, but that's uh, neither here nor there right now. Looking on the internet, hopefully you can see this clearly, I found some regulations. Now the first thing I'm gonna point out about this is this is 1983, and I know for sure they came out with some new regulations in around 2015, but Scrolling down here, and uh, just quickly, I did save some photos, um, and I went right to the point, basically. The two articles that are dealt with here, and again, reminding you, these are older restrictions, and what it's saying is the inspection and clearance of People's Republic of China customs of gold and silver taken or retaken abroad will be made in accordance with the amount shown in the certificate issued by the People's Bank of China or original declaration and registration from made entry. Meaning if you'd come in with it, you declare it on the way in and you use that declaration certificate to take it back out with you. Or the certificate issued by the People's Bank of China. And that's what I'm after in the near future. And I'll have those answers probably shortly. Um, all gold and silver without the covering certificate or in excess of the amount declared and registered upon entry shall not be allowed to be taken out of the country. They don't want you taking precious metals out of here uh, without the proper documentation. Anyways, Article 27, gold and silver ornaments, including gold inlaid work, handicrafts, articles, etc., uh, taken out of the People's Republic of China by tourists who have purchased the uh, said article in the People's Republic of China shall be inspected and cleared by uh People's Republic of China customs uh, upon showing of a special receipt. So the special receipt, if you're a tourist over here, make sure you're getting a special receipt. If you're not getting some type of documentation with this, don't buy it because you probably won't be able to leave with it. Again, these are very old. Uh, down here, they have some limitations for uh, Chinese citizens or um, residents who are expatriating or leaving the country. Oh, sorry, a little pop-up. Um, yeah, they're pretty small. Uh, we're talking about one ounce or probably about, uh, looks like about 10 ounces of silver, one ounce of gold, 10 ounces of silver, 
and utensils. I don't know what utensils are, I suppose silverware. Um, moving forward here, uh, what do we got? Back into Safari. Yeah, I found another one here, and this one is also uh, procedures governing the carrying of gold and silver into or out of China. Again, 1984 and much more restrictive. And I'll cut to the chase here. I did take a photograph of this one here, basically what pertains. And these are old, remember that? Article five, number one, uh, taking abroad in general, at the time was 15.6 grams or half an ounce of gold and 156.25 grams of silver, or you're looking at about, eh, about five ounces or so that you could take out. Emigrants, meaning you're leaving the country, um, permanently or going to live abroad could take one ounce or the 10 ounces of silver. So for those carrying anything above the limit, uh, uh, above the limits before exit are to submit a special certificate issued by, and then these, that's where they get back into these special certificates. Okay. And cut to the chase here and basically use that special certificate to apply for your permit for taking gold and silver out of the country. So these rules, uh, the framework of these rules is still in place. However, I think the procedures have changed, the numbers have changed, so I'm not gonna get too locked down on that. Um, more modern, we get into here, I found on another website, and this is a Chinese travel site, Go Foreign, Expat Life here over here in China. And again, cut, cutting to the chase, what do they say about that? So for export, you must declare the following when exiting China and currency and other items, but we get into what we're interested in here is the silver and gold and any other valuable items. If gold, silver and products made from them are less than 50 grams, two ounces, again, doesn't make sense, 50 grams or two ounces, then they are duty-free and do not need to be declared. Now, this is on a, a website. I want to hear this directly from Customs and I want to hear this directly from the People's Bank of China. So before I go buying big piles of, of precious metals over here, I'm going to make sure that uh, well, all this works and I've greased the wheels basically. So with my friend, uh, I sent him a list of questions to ask the other day. So uh, questions for customs, and this is referring to an individual like myself taking it out on my carry-on baggage. So first off, what's the limit? Is it 50 grams? Is it two ounces? What can I take without declaring? Um, are there any documents that will be required anyways? And must I declare it or, uh, or do you need to see documents? If not, I can just throw up my bag and walk out if it's under 50 grams. I'm not sure, we'll see. Um, Okay, I asked about clarification of the 50 grams and the 62 or two ounces, 62.2 grams. Um, and also clarifying, okay, this is 50 grams of, of precious metals. Is this one piece I can take out less than 50 grams or multiple? Can I take 50 grams of silver and 50 grams of gold? What do the limits apply to? Or is it all just 50 grams of precious metals, period? Probably, I'm gonna guess yes. We'll see. Um, uh, how many girls are gonna, how many, okay, so if I do declare, if I do have the documents, if I have the permit from the, um, People's Bank of China, how much can I take every time I leave? Is it 10 ounces? Is it 100 ounces? 50 ounces? Is there a limit per year, per month, or per departure? I don't know. And that's what I'm looking to get the specifics of. Uh, when declaring, um, the metals are taken out with procedures and list of documents. Uh, what will they ask for specifically? Are they gonna, uh, do I need uh, uh, just the document from the People's Bank of China? Do I need to fill out any more paperwork? What are the specific procedures, okay? So, um, you know, I, I, do, I wanna make sure I've covered all my bases here before I get there so that it goes really smoothly because if you've been around China at all, you know the bureaucracy is just, um, how to say, well, Let's just say, you know you know what I'm talking about if you've been around China. And the bureaucracy is really slow and a lot of red tape. So similar questions to the People's Bank of China. And again, referring to myself, leaving with precious metals. 
exactly how do I apply for this, where do I go, who do I talk to, and what other documentation such as residence permit, my passport, and other, other items are you going to need to see to get this document. How much can I take with on each trip? How much can I take per month, per year? Is there a limitation? Um, and where exactly and who exactly should I be talking to at my local branch? Each major city will have a branch of the People's Bank of China and you'll have a specific department or person that you need to deal with. So, you know, I, what, what I'm going to try to do is as you get specific PDFs from these people, um, hopefully in English, but I also want to carry an English copy and a Chinese copy when I walk through customs with my medals with all my documents in place and, and having some idea how the procedure is going to work, but to carry the, the actual laws and the reference numbers of those laws with me. So that if you happen to run into a person who's not quite familiar with what the limitations are, the usual response to that from a Chinese official would be to just refuse because if they cannot confirm that it's right or wrong, they're not going to make their own call on this. They're just going to say no. It's the safe answer for them. So I want to have something they can use, uh, the specific code or whatever of that law, so that they can immediately go into their system on the computer and reference that law themselves and read it and then make their own judgment call based on what the law says, not what they understand or don't understand. So um, I expect to have those back shortly. We sent out the emails today. Uh, we tried to meet with them over the last couple of days. And of course, uh, there's a Chinese holiday, May Day. Uh, um, May Day is the communist holiday starting on May 1st. It goes for three days. And nobody's in the banks or offices until Sunday of all days. Because over here, that would be your makeup day for losing days of work. So every coin I have bought so far has a specific document except for one and I do regret it a little bit but what I'm hoping is it well it's a 30 gram coin it's probably the most expensive coin here it comes from a Chinese grading company now I can find an online document and maybe download that I'm I'm not sure maybe that'll do with the People's Bank of China to add that in to the permit the export permit um, if not I'm hoping I can just take it out in the under 50 gram category and bring this just on its own one time, throw it in my bag and off I go. If not, I'll have to figure out what to do with it. Uh, maybe sell it and replace it with a coin that has a certificate. So if not, you know, we'll see. If not, I too also think of contacting this HCGS, which is, uh, I'm not sure what city they're in, but I have their website. I've looked up this specific coin. They have a card for it online. Um, stating what it is and what they certified as MS-70. So maybe I'm able to contact them or through this QR code or something like that, get some more information um, from them in the future. I'm going to worry about that later. For now, no big deal. Um, I think it'll fit in the under 50 gram category anyways, as long as I take it by itself. No questions asked, off I go. But before I go and buy say 100 pandas, like I'm thinking about doing, I'm definitely going to want to iron this procedure out and test it before I actually commit and start buying large quantity of metal. Now, I don't think it matters which metal I buy. So silver, to get a lot of value, I have to buy a lot of it, which means a lot of paperwork and making sure the procedure works. Buying a few coins here, if it fits under the 50 grams, well, off I go every time I go home, I can take home basically, you know, 50, 30 grams and eight grams. There's 38 grams, it's under the 58 grams. I could even take two of these things with me and I'm still under the 50 grams, off I go. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have a, a specific information quite yet. I do have a lot of information I'm trying to gather and we are waiting on the answer. So we have a, a one phone discussion with customs already. And on Sunday or Monday, we're going to have a either face-to-face -face or phone call meeting with the People's Bank of China. So I will be getting some specifics in the near future. And if you're curious about doing the same, please feel free to contact me. Send me, put a comment in uh, on the video. Or um, stay tuned for a future update because when I do get those, I'm going to be posting them on here for you and uh, where you can reference them. So thanks for joining me. Have a good day. Thanks for joining me here on Silver Flyer once again. If you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe. 
I'll appreciate uh, any feedback, positive or negative. Um, it does give me ideas for future videos. And uh, my next video will be proving and doing some testing on the Chinese coin.